Yeah, I just told our players uh, after the game, you know, the same thing we've been telling them for a couple of days, just, you know, how much respect we have for Iowa State. When we when we got here, we, uh, you know, we try to build a program like Iowa State in a lot of ways, one of the best home courts in college basketball, first class uh, fan base, obviously great players, got a huge NBA influence. Coach Prone does a great job. We saw that firsthand with our Little Rock team a couple years ago. We got beat in the tournament by Iowa State in the second round. Um, you know, they're obviously shorthanded right now. I um, really feel bad for Bolton, one of the best players in our league. I just don't like it. It doesn't sit well with me when the best players can't play in March. And just hoping, um, you know, put him in our team prayer that he can get back by Kansas City. Um, but the team's got zero quit in it. They uh, play the right way. So we just got a lot of, lot of uh, respect for tonight's opponent. Wish those guys best of luck down the stretch and, and of course, in Kansas City. Um, thought our guys played well. You know, obviously, uh, we want to get off to a good start in the month of March, so we're trying to do that. We played the way the right way for most of the game. Got the balance scoring. Um, didn't like the way we took care of the ball tonight. Too many turnovers and, and didn't like the way we, you know, didn't get enough offensive rebounds. So offensively, obviously, some things to work on. Defensively, I thought we were dialed in. We tried hard. We had an urgency to us. Um, still just kind of a deal where we have untimely mistakes. You know, four guys are doing what they're supposed to do. One guy makes a mistake. In a team like Iowa State, at a level like this, the Big 12, you know, they'll expose you. So um, consistency continues to be kind of the, the objective on defense. And then on offense, just trying to keep playing the right way. Uh, but the guys tried really hard tonight. We were dialed in. We had some good individual performances. Um, so we're not, you know, it's nice to win in the season with our last home game with a win. Obviously, got to talk about our student section, right? Um, have really transformed Texas Tech basketball in, in our in our five seasons here. Really started that first year and the second year with the Elite Eight. But um, the way these Tech students come out and support our team is it's humbling. It's appreci appreciated. Um, it excites our guys. It gives us a home court advantage. So just want to thank all of our fans this year, season ticket holders, people that came out to the game during the COVID restrictions and uh, but especially that student body. I think, uh, you know, they're becoming Texas Tech basketball in a lot of ways, and that was always by design, and it's it's great to see our vision, um, you know, happening. So I really want to thank the students for coming out, not only tonight, but the games all season long. Let's start with Skyler from AP. I'm sorry. You said me. I'm sorry I couldn't hear. Yeah, Skyler, go ahead. Okay, sorry about that. Chris? Uh, you get another crack at Baylor Saturday. What What do you want to see out of your guys in that one? I just want to see uh, what we did the first time we played Baylor. You know, we we recognized them as a one of the best teams in college basketball, a team that's been together a long time, a team that has that experience factor. Um, you know, we, we, we played hard um, and well at times in, in, in round one. I think we had a two-point lead, about seven minutes left in the game, and just didn't make the plays down the stretch. So, above all, I want to see a confident, aggressive, um, you know, a team with joy, a team that is looking forward to playing, one of the best teams in the country on the road. It's a great opportunity. Um, it's a great opportunity to see where we stack up before, you know, March Madness starts. So, uh, I, want our, I, want our, I want our guys to enjoy this opportunity. I want them to enjoy this, this game. Um, that's, that's objective number one. Would you prefer to avoid the first round or play-in game, whatever you want to call it, in the Big 12 tournament, or does that matter much to you? Yeah, i just always been a guy that wants to play. You know, it's a valid question. Everybody kind of has an opinion, you know, rest versus momentum. And, um, but, I, I, you know, I can't control things like that. There's a bracket, and they're going to put us in that bracket at some point. So we'll just play the games they ask us to play. But um, I know this, uh, I, I just want to play. And uh, thinking about being down there last year and not having a chance to coach Moretti and Chris Clark and Holyfield um, and Dre and those guys in, in the last game, uh, that hurt. And uh, so I'm just looking forward to playing whatever time, whatever day. Uh, we're just excited to, to participate in this year's championship. Appreciate it, you guys. All right, Joe Yeager. Joe, you. Yeah, Coach. Um... Uh, jumped out to a 16-point lead. Uh, looked like things were going great, but then Iowa State 
uh, sort of made a little bit of a run, actually cut the lead down to seven in the second half, <clears throat> but then you finished very strongly. Uh, what was the key, do you think, to really seizing control of the game uh, midway through the second half? Well, I think just perseverance and staying the course. Iowa State's done that to everybody all season long. Um, you know, they've been in every game. They play stretches. So, you know, we weren't disappointed to be up seven or eight. We're just staying the course trying to win the game. Um, you know, those records and all that stuff doesn't mean anything. The ball's out there. There's ten players. Iowa State's really good and they're well coached. So, um, we knew they were going to have some runs and they did. Uh, fortunate for us, we had kind of the last few runs uh, that were able to – you know, let us be successful tonight. And, uh, Coach, uh, over the last three games, <clears throat> Santos Silva has only committed two total fouls, uh, and you've had three good results in these three games. Uh, is that coincidental? No, it's been an objective and a focus all season long, as it is with all of our best players. Um, you know, each player in this game has to have a certain kind of discipline on both ends. Certainly with uh, Marcus being a physical, aggressive, athletic, hard-playing dude, he's got to pick and choose his moments. And so, um, you know, I, I think he's obviously, uh, you know, trying really hard to pick his moments. And I think you gotta, you got to recognize the, the, the discipline uh, and the defensive patience that he's playing with right now. I hope it can continue. Let's go to Carlos. Coach, how'd you feel about the response by Mac after scoring four points uh, the previous game and really kind of finding his way in terms of finding finding his shot and being able to kind of work on the offense today? Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know, Carlos. I, I wasn't disappointed in Mac at all last game. He had six assists. He played the game the right way. At this level, this isn't a game where you can just go out there and say, "I'm going to score 15 tonight." You know, you take what the defense gives you. Um, you know, similar to, I think, Kev tonight. You know, I mean, Kev's a double-digit scorer in the Big 12. It's just one of those games. He gets seven rebounds, no turnovers. So, like, what I'm interested in is winning. Um, and I thought last game, Mac had enough assists to help us win. And tonight, you know, he scored the ball. Um, so, to me, it's never about I – just, I just don't see the game like that. You know, I, I'm watching how guys play. Are you playing the right way? In terms of the turnovers, I know that was something you – alluded to at the beginning, you guys had nine in the first half, but four in the second half. What, what did you feel the guys did in terms of focus to be able to, to ensure that they weren't uh, turning the ball over in that second half? Yeah, I don't think there was any huge adjustment other than recognizing that Iowa State was trapping ball screens. Um, I don't know if that led to any of our first half turnovers, but it, it just led to us maybe being a little bit uh, less aggressive, passive than we want to be. So that was the only objective kind of coaching thing I could help the guys with and just reminding them that, like, let's just play with some poise. Um, you know, I still, I'm not a big fan of the, the <clears throat> excuse me, the zero or one pass turnover. You know, I've never understood that. We come across, we got time on the shot clock. Why are we putting ourselves in that situation? Um, you're going to turn the ball over in the Big 12 from time to time because the defenses are so good and the players are good. Um, but I just don't like the early shot clock turnover, and we had a couple of those. Also, I've always thought there's a difference between a basketball turnover and a casual turnover. And sometimes we use a different word than casual in our locker room. Um, but I think my mom watches these, so we'll go with casual tonight. But uh, I did recognize, uh, like you're saying, Carlos, I thought we were um, more focused, more careful, more disciplined in the second half. It was obviously an objective that we were trying not to turn the ball over. Last one for me, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask uh... – how special was it to get Ty Larson to, to get on the court and just be able to kind of experience a basketball game, especially with the the, uh, the career he's looking to do and being head coach and being a graduate assistant at some point? Yeah, so Ty is a college basketball player. He played junior college ball in Wyoming. <clears throat> uh, like like many of us in this profession, he he knew his playing days were, uh, were, were over, but a coaching career could be a real possibility with his love of basketball. So – when he came here to be our student manager, student assistant, uh, his role this year is the head head manager. He's done a great job. But uh, I talked to him a couple years ago about, you know, trying to get him in the game senior night if that opportunity presented itself. So, um, you know, it's not like we're just putting guys out there that can't can't do it. Ty was a good player in junior college and has done a great job in his role here. Uh, and that was a nice thing, I think, for our fan base and for Ty. Uh, super appreciative of all our student assistants, managers, GAs, all the – the guys on the front lines of the program. Um, only got the one senior this year with Ty, 
Uh, we got some other guys that have been in the program a couple years. Noah's done a great job. Kate, all those guys. Um, so we always want to recognize those guys on senior night. Godfather, uh, Cooper Anderson last year was recognized. So um, tonight, you know, I was able to keep my word and, and, and give Ty an opportunity to dress out. Coach, how do you feel about being able to get the ball in the paint with 36 points in the paint and limiting Iowa State's second chance opportunities? It's kind of hard to listen to the question, man, when you get that mask on. What is that? It's a Bucky's mask. Bucky's. Uh, hey, let's talk. To- let's talk about Bucky's for a minute. In my Division Two days, man, I only got a couple days at Christmas, and I've been known to be a procrastinator. And I don't know if Bucky's is a corporate sponsor here through Learfield and, and 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 the fine folks there, but. You know, I am a Bucky's fan. I went rolling into a Bucky's one time about 1 a.m. on Christmas morning, and I had yet to buy a present for anybody in my life. Dude, I spent 30 minutes in Bucky's, and I came out like a champ. Not only did I deliver presents, I delivered presents the next day where people were literally like hugging me and asking me what got into me. I mean, you don't have to get the, uh, you know, the the uh, the blanket or the old DVD. Um, I mean, at Bucky's, you have legitimate choices i mean you can do your christmas shopping at bucky's so um yeah I'm, I'm a big fan of bucky's was that your question do i like bucky's yes i like bucky's i was actually asking about being able to get the, the uh ball into the paint 36 points and then limiting iowa state second chance opportunities yeah paint touches are an objective by all offenses you get there different ways you know feeding the post dribble penetration moving the ball um you know, for us, we, we just determine good shot selection. We want to get great shots. We want to get March shots. We all want to be on the same page. Uh, and certainly, anytime you get to the paint, you know, that's, that's, that's going to help your offense. Uh, Coach, saw the tweet, but uh, any more words about Parker Hicks and what he was able to do this year? Uh, yeah, Parker did a great job in our program for two years. Uh, Played in that Elite Eight team. I never forget talking to Parker. Hey, do you want a red shirt? And he's one of the first guys to say, Coach, I want to be a part of this. I think this team could be special. So um, before everybody else kind of maybe recognize what we could be, I'll never forget young Parker as a freshman wanting to play as a freshman on that Elite Eight team because he thought we could be special. Um, the next year, he was a, a player on our Final Four Big 12 Championship uh, Monday night team and um, did a great job. You know, like all players, we want guys' dreams to come true and run their own race. And Parker decided to go uh, play where he could get more minutes, and I certainly respected that uh, decision. Uh, I was excited when he picked Lubbock Christian because selfishly we could stay in touch with him and watch him play. I try to get over there every year and watch him play in person. We follow the games at night on the computer and all that stuff. So um, an outstanding person, great kid, teammate, really – Made a huge impact here. He was a big, big time part of our lead eight and final four team. And um, it's nice to see him playing the game. You guys know that I've coached in the Lone Star Conference, uh, both at Abilene Christian early in my career and then most recently at Angelo State. And to be the MVP in that league, that that's that means you're a really good player. And uh, I think Parker will have a chance to play some professional ball if that's what he chooses. Or it's always been kind of his vision to follow in his dad's footsteps and be a and be a coach. Um, and if we can help him in any way do that when he's playing career over, you know, he's definitely the kind of guy we want to help. So I was really proud of Parker, and, um, you know, I wish him best of luck. They're going to be in the NCAA tournament. I think the regional is actually going to be here in Lubbock, so I would encourage anybody out there listening to uh, to go support Lubbock Christian uh, when they when they play in that regional. Uh, they got a great team, Coach Duncan, Coach Imes. You know, those those are our guys. We, uh, we got a great relationship with the people at Lubbock Christian. And uh, we're super proud of our former player, Parker. Any more questions out there? You guys share? Bucky's, guys, warm food, too. You don't have to get the Lunchable or the fountain drink. Yes, they have the beef jerky, but if you want a warm meal at, at Bucky's, it's there, man. Marcus, uh, just with the way you guys played in the first half, what, what allowed Iowa State to get back into it? And what, what were you all able to do in those first four minutes of the second half about to accept it? Um, I'll say we wasn't playing our defense that we have been lately, and I think we was letting Iowa State get comfortable, and they was hitting a whole bunch of threes. I know 
Uh, number one, Harris, he was getting off with a whole bunch of pull-up threes, and we was messing up on that. And then also, I think on the offensive end, uh, they was able to score because of our offense because we was – at some point we was getting – like we was turning the ball over, not getting good shots, taking bad shots, and they was able to push it out and get on the break and then get into their offense or just get quick threes. And then second half came after the talk with the coaches. We knew what we had to do, get back down to what we know we were doing, playing our Texas Tech defense. And then I think once we got on a run and was able to get a few, collect a few stops, it, everything started to roll for us. Uh, I just think overall, I think I just – Playing our defense again and running, and while we was able to run, Mac was able to get to to the lane on the fast breaks, and then also he was I think just moving the ball like we was moving the ball a lot today, and he was able to find open shots and pick his spots where he wanted to go finish. I feel like that was what everyone because I think today we ended with one, two, five guys in double digits. I think just moving that ball and just everyone was getting to their spots and getting to their go-to moves. Um, it was great. All the, uh, most of the things that go around here wouldn't be happening if it wasn't for Ty. He does the things that no one sees for us. He's always there when we need it. When we need him, and he's just a great guy overall. And he's going to do something special in the future. But nah. Ty, I was, we were so happy that Ty was able to get in because he deserved it. All right, let's go to Brandon Salise. Yeah, Mark, a couple of weeks ago, you said you challenged yourself to be better for this team. Uh, what have you done differently in the gym or just in the mindset to kind of get it rolling for yourself? Um, um, I, after the Oklahoma State game, I really – Looked at myself, uh, looked at myself in the mirror, and then realized like I'm screwing my team up on the defensive end. And I like what Bear told us like, hey, if you guys are doing the same thing before every game, getting prepared, and it's not working, I think it's time you guys need to start changing stuff. I really took that to heart. So then, that's when I just started every single time. Now I just have I talk to Adams and Coach Adams and our GA Drew, and just watch defensive clips. I tell him send me anything you have defensive wise, so I could get an advantage, so I could help this team out. Because I feel like if I become the defense defensive anchor for the, for our team, we're able to do what we're doing right now. And I feel like that started all with the whole ball screen, just being more aggressive on the ball screen and just being just a defensive anchor out there for the guys and being more active. Uh, last one for me. How big were these two games to get rescheduled? And you obviously still have Baylor, but these two home games to kind of get things going for your team. Um, it was big, able to. Give, it was it was big that we was able to get these games back because we we didn't we didn't like the way we was ending right now and then just coming back regrouping and now having these games so we could get back to what we know what to do and then just getting ready now. All right, let's go to Skyler from the AP. Marcus, you get another crack at Baylor Saturday. What do you want to see out of you guys in that one? Uh, what we've been doing lately on uh, our offense and defense. Uh, being aggressive offense, moving that ball, and then also f on defense, being aggressive and doing what we know we gotta do. We got we know what we gotta do with their their guards and how they play, and we know what we got we know what game plan we need to use for it. So just looking go back in the film room, look what we did, look at the good and bad what we did against Baylor the last time we played, and now and then fix it up and get ready for Sunday.